Ah, oh, it's such an exquisite phone now. Hope you enjoyed that all, I'm sure you did. Um, we are so thrilled here at the New York International Children's Film Festival to be able to share the English language dub premiere of My Life is a Zucchini with you. My name is Maria Cristina Villaseñor and I'm the programming director here at NICEF and uh, we really want to express our gratitude to the entire G Kids team for making this evening possible. So we have a number of special guests this evening all around us. Um, we have members of the English Language Voice cast that we're very thrilled to have here. And we also have Dave Jesta, who is the producer of the English Language Dub of My Life as a Zucchini, as well as the president of G-Kids. So please welcome Dave Jesta. And um, so we have uh, both the voice of Zucchini and Camille, who I want to invite up to the stage to join us. So, Zucchini is voiced by Eric Abade, and Camille is Ness Krell. Um, but we also wanted to acknowledge the voices of the characters Alice, Beatrice, and Georgie. So if you could please stand and wave. Clara Young, Olivia Buckner, and Amy Robbins. So of course, as you know, here at NICEF, we like to invite everyone's voice um, to be actively engaged and posing questions to all of our guests here. So we're going to invite you to think of questions that you have regarding both the process of this film voice actors and how it all comes together. Um, and so while you formulate your questions and come up to either microphone um, and line up, I'm going to just kick off by asking you, Dave, to talk a little bit both about the artistic process and this amazing stop motion animation and a little bit of uh, what Claude Barras, the director, and his team went through in terms of making this come to life, and then also specifically how you give voice to this piece. So turn it over to you. Absolutely. Well, thank you. First of all, thanks to you, everyone, for, uh, for coming out and seeing the film. Uh, it's always really special to, to share the film with an audience, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the director, uh, Claude Barras, uh, sends his love from France. He's sorry he couldn't be here. Uh, they had the César Awards tonight, which is sort of like the French Oscars, and the uh, film actually won two awards for uh, Best Animated Feature and Best Writing. So, uh, so um, it's a nice little prelude to the, uh, the Oscars on Sunday. Um, and he'll actually get to win something, so it'll be great. Um, in terms of uh, how the film is actually made, um, we actually have a, another special guest here, which is one of the original puppets for Zucchini. Um, and you can see the scale that they're working at. Uh, this is one of uh, eight uh, Zucchini puppets, and they have different puppets for each of the characters. Um, he is uh, very delightful, he's very delicate, and he costs $15,000. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and the way that stop motion animation works is, uh, you know, if you like to take photos, it's basically, you know, you pose uh, for each frame of film. So you, you know, move his hand just a little bit at a time, and take a photo, and then you move it again, take another photo. And if you do uh, 24 frames a second, uh, so 24 photos a second, and then you put them all together, then you have just a little bit of movement. So each animator created about three seconds of movie footage a day. Um, and so it's a time-intensive and late, laborious process. Um, but the end result, I think, with everyone would agree, was incredibly beautiful. So it's definitely a very uh, handcrafted form and, and, uh, and very special. So, um, so yeah. And I guess, uh, like Maria Christina said, uh, we're joined on stage by uh, Eric, who plays Zucchini, and Nessie played uh, Camille. Here. And that's why everyone in the cast did a great job. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to be in a dub. Uh, English dubbing is very hard. It's the movie started as a French movie. Um, as you can tell on the end credits, they have an audition scene, which is one of the original auditions from um, the child who was supposed to play Zucchini in the French version, but by the time the movie actually got made, his voice had changed. So he ended up actually playing uh, Simon the Bully in the French version. Um, but, uh, but dubbing, you know, you have a French film, and then so um, I guess I'd... I'd uh, have the actors explain it a little bit, but um, in the studio, you, know, you play back, uh, we write the script to match the voice 
the lip movements that are already there, and you have constant arguments about the best way to interpret a sentence so that it still fits the movement and sounds natural in English. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so Eric, can you talk a little bit about uh, what it was like to be uh, directed in, in English and uh, how you sort of looked at what was on screen and, uh, and created the, the character in English? Well, you know, I just thought it was a really great film. From the moment I stepped in there, I kind of felt just like the creativity kind of coming from the voices that were already recorded. And I, I was thinking about how I would feel if I was in his situation and how, like, how my emotions would feel. And then I'm thinking how his emotions would feel, getting directed, kind of mashing that all up together, kind of putting it into something beautiful that was made, you know? Not just by me, by all the other creative people who may have even done better than me. <laughs> Probably did. <laughs> Everyone did really good. Thank you. I guess, Judy, you can add that, like, your experience in terms of how it's like to see a character who is already, you're not being photographed, you know, you're, you're just a voice, so how do you bring a character to life just using uh, your voice? Well, he said it pretty well. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's a lot harder than like on camera because you're not actually expressing the emotions with like your face, so like it's harder to see. So, but I mean, it's actually really fun because you get to like be someone else and all that. Fantastic. Um, I think at this point, if anyone has questions, I don't know how the, the exact question process will go, but if you have questions, we'd love to hear them. Yeah, let's, uh, uh, let's get some answers out. Let's switch up, start on the left this time, and we'll go left to right with uh, people lined up, so please go ahead. So what um, inspired you making stop motion? So I know that the director, Cloud, um, has actually done several uh, short films. One of his short films, uh, for people, this is the 20th anniversary of Nike. And uh, one of his short films was actually one of the first shorts that I saw uh, when I first came like 10 years ago, uh, which is called uh, Genie in a Tin of Raviolis. And it was a, uh, a, another stop motion story about a, a genie in a ravioli tin who only gives two wishes, and it's a musical. And so he's been uh, making short films for, uh, for many years, and this was his first feature. And so I think um, he was you know, really interested in, in finding, um, a lot of his stories are about uh, about children and about kind of children in sort of uh, maybe dark circumstances who find whimsy and humor in them. And so I think it was sort of a natural fit for, uh, for the book that was adapted. Okay. What was your favorite part of the process of making the film? Uh, finishing was great. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's, um, every, part, every part is really special. I think, um, uh, that was sort of a joke, but it's actually very true because we actually uh, had the premiere at Sundance um, a few months ago, and we were done, I think, like three weeks prior to the, or three days prior to the screening, and so it was really a touch and go situation there for a while. Uh, but I think the, the most uh, special part uh, when you translate a film into English is having actors, and you get to hear, you've heard the film already in French so many times, and you've argued over uh, how it'll sound in English, and to hear uh, such talented actors um, bring it to life is really when you hear it for the first time, you say this will work. There's something like that. It's very, very special to hear. Um, you know, so often you hear like how someone else did a movie for years, and then someone, you know, made it their own, which is really, really, really special. Hey, the young man over there. How long did it take to make all the characters? Uh, so the film took about three years uh, to make. Um, the actual process of designing the characters, I think, uh, only took about one year, but uh, they kept... The, the audition video in the end is actually an early video that they made when they were uh, first trying out what the look would be. So you'll, if you notice, the character looks a little differently, and they kept changing it a little bit until the very end, and then they had kind of a final set of designs. Thank you. Uh, how long did it take to do the stop-motion animation? Uh, so that also that probably took about two years for uh, Cloud and his team and, and me. And it, uh, you know, if it's 24 photos a second um, times 60 for uh, times minutes times 63, I got into films, I, I failed in math, but there's a lot of, of, uh, of photos that went into this. So, um, yeah, it was a very intense process. Hey, go ahead, please. I'm Elisa Huberman. I'm a movie connoisseur, and 
to the director of the English dub as well as to president of G Kids. How do you cast kids to play the parts apart from other commercial movies where they cast other kids stars who are experienced in film and television or grown-ups voicing kids that sounds too artificial like in Saturday morning cartoons? Uh, it's, it's really hard. Um, actually, I was like, so, can you talk a little bit about the audition process from your side? What do you see when we say, when, you, when we ask to, for you to try out for the role? Um, well, when you ask, like, um, for me to try out for the role, that I think that kind of means, like, um, for everyone to just kind of, like, put their best and to know that if they were to, like, not put their best if they get the role and then, like, think about that whole emotion thing, like, his and ours and stuff, think about that before you go on the audition. Don't over-prepare yourself, but, like, prepare yourself in a way that you know that you're giving this character life, because this character doesn't have life before the person auditions or gets the part and makes him a living, breathing thing. You know, he's not alive, and, you know, all those other figures are not alive, but us actors, we brought them to life. I was really like listening to uh, to like the voice match, and a lot of times you're trying to match to what the original uh, film intent is, and talk to the director. Uh, but so often you're looking more for like the emotion behind the voice, and less just like a perfect voice match. So it's a very uh, there are arguments and things, but um, I think at the end of the day, uh, it always ends up working out uh, really well. So. Um, so, uh, which version is nominated for the Oscars? Is the English language version or the French language version? So it's the French language version because the deadlines were in November. Uh, the movie wasn't, the dub wasn't done by that point. Uh, you know, I'll, the DVD that comes out here will have both. It will have both, yeah. And actually, in, uh, in theaters too, we're showing both. Uh, because I do think that there's great value in both. I mean, really, why we dub a film in English is not to replace the French version, it's to try to broaden the audience. So, if for any reason, uh, the fact that it was originally in French, that you had to read subtitles, was a barrier for you experiencing this film. We felt like it was a film or a story that needed to be shared widely, and whatever we could do to help that happen uh, was really important to us. All right, let's get a couple more kids with us here. How did you come up with the name of the movie? So it's actually uh, based on a, on a book called The Autobiography of a Courgette, and it's a French book. Um, and zucchinis in France are called courgettes, which is something that I learned. Uh, I always learn something new with every movie. And on this movie, I learned about uh, what every country in the world calls a zucchini. Um, in the UK, they call it a courgette, so we have an actually a whole English dub. I think we made you all say courgette, <laughs> uh, for especially for Britain. Um, but that was from the original book. Uh, and that was based on the, the author's sort of, it was a, a mix of uh, memoir and uh, fiction. Would you recommend this movie more for children or adults? Uh, that's a hard question. What do you think? Uh. <laughs> Good. That's what I'd say. I think it's really, you know, it's, I think, you know, it's, um, it is, it's, it's a really challenging, I think it's a challenging film. Um, I think it has, you know, some subjects that are, are probably dark compared to the standard, um, you know, Hollywood kids movies, but I also, yeah, I think that's one of the great things about uh, showing it at the New York International Children's Film Festival because Nike has, I think, always had a really important uh, place in terms of uh, sort of presenting uh, programming and films that I think sort of illuminate uh, kids' experiences um, across the world in, in really different ways than I think what you might expect um, like a standard kids' movie to be. And so uh, certainly I think everyone um, within some, <laughs> some boundaries are, are totally welcome to this film. I think that it's for adults and also for families. And uh, I hope that um, you know, the existence of the English version uh, we'll help. We'll help that happen. So I do hope that it's shared. Okay, maybe one more question because we want to give everyone time to come up and check out Zucchini as well. So one more over there. Then. You in back. It was actually two quick questions. One about uh, the funding. Uh, how did they get funded? And what's the next project that the directors are going to be working 
Sure. So uh, the money uh, comes from a variety of sources. It's a European film, and so often European films, unlike, say, Hollywood movies, where if Disney decides they're going to make a movie, they just write the check, and it's very easy for them. Uh, European movies are often funded in a variety of countries. So this film is um, what's called a, a European co-production. So it's mostly a Swiss film. Uh, with some uh, French companies also involved, and uh, I believe, um, forgetting my whole soup of countries here, but most it's a Swiss French co production, um, and so it's like 20 different companies coming together to help the director tell his story, which is really kind of an incredible thing. Um, and in terms of his next project, he is actually working on a short film right now um, for the National Film Board in Canada. Uh, I know he's looking at other features, but uh, he still loves making short films. And, they're definitely easier to make than a feature film. All right, we'll squeeze one more in, and then we'll wrap up. Oh, oh sorry, we need to yeah. keep you. Yeah, yeah, here. If you use the if microphone you there, that's Thank yeah, you. No, know, it um, it feels great, you know, to know that um, you get to act out a story where you. Can like a character that's very important and you know it's like nice because you know you can think of all my other accomplishments what was one of my accomplishments i was the hero in a movie i mean it feels good to know that like even if sometimes you fail in life you get to be a really cool character in a movie <laughs> That I think we'll wrap up. I want to thank everyone here, the amazing voice cast, everyone at GKIT, and thank all you. of you for participating Absolutely. in this amazing evening. Yeah, thank you very much. And if you enjoyed the film, please tell your friends. There's uh, more screenings on Sunday at noon and 2.15? 2 o'clock at the Landmark Sunshine downtown. Um, We'll have giveaways and things there too. So uh, I hope that you share uh, you share the film uh, with friends and family. Enjoy. Thank you. Yes, we hope to see you at the festival for the next four weekends.